Let's check out the two trees SP5. Here I'm looking at the base and we can see the controller here hidden behind or protected behind this metal grate. Um, there's the ribbon cable to the screen. All the cables come in and uh, here we can see we've got two stepper motors for the Z attached with a belt uh, which is kind of interesting. I've never actually dealt with a printer that had two motors and a belt here um, but this looks good and here's the power supply and it looks pretty standard. Uh, actually just taking a look making sure that it's set to the right voltage and all the cabling looks okay and it does and there's even space for a little more if you need it later and there's also a fan unfortunately this fan is on full time um, at some point I'd like to change that and speaking of fans here's a second fan which is kind of nice blows directly onto the motor controller chips and uh, with the cooling fins and um, again I do wish this one cable and possibly the other for the motors were tied down a little bit more, but otherwise this looks good. Flipping this over, here we can see uh, it's really, frankly, it's built nicely. It's super strong. Uh, this isn't flimsy in any way, shape, or form. Here we can see all the wiring nicely taped down, everything labeled. Here's the uh, tool head. Um, it's got dual blowers. And then here's also the cabling for the bed heater and sensors. Here's the 20 by 40 extrusion. It looks like it's really nice quality. All the holes are pre-drilled. Um, it's also really nice because one side of this is uh, completely flat. Really kind of nice looking instead of the grooves. Looking at the end, it's nicely cut. Everything's smooth, anodized. The holes are threaded. Uh, overall, this looks like really nice extrusion and the cuts are square which is also great the base has these really nice cutouts along with space for the wiring so you can easily fit the extrusion in like so and then two bolts go in on the side like so and then two into the bottom of the base, like so. Uh, this ends up being super secure and super strong, and the steel used here is very strong. The Z-axis has these 12 millimeter rails that are already attached. You don't have to do this yourself. Um, it seems like it's fairly tight. There is also, um, or rather, a high preload. Um, it also has the uh, uh, grease ports as well as the end stops on each end to stop the carriage from falling off um, and the grease ports work so here I'm installing the Z extrusion and rails and I'm doing this after I put up the outer four corners which is exactly wrong um, what happened was there is a manual and an addendum to the manual and I got caught up while I was building this and forgot about the addendum the addendum asks you to insert these uh, Z extrusions and rails first and then install the T, or some might call this the crossbar. If you do this in the wrong order, you will have some work ahead of you. Also, when you install the extrusion in the four corners, make sure you pay attention to this little indentation or depression in the extrusion. Uh, these need to be oriented toward the top and toward the outside edge in all corners. If you don't do this, you're gonna have a heck of a time with the cross braces. But then again, if you build this in the proper order, you'll probably notice this right away. Unlike me, I had some rework here because of this, but just make sure. And it should look like this when you are done. The cross beams in place, mounted to the Z, mounted to the corners. Then you mount the top in place. Uh, it's nice, accurate, tight fit. And uh, once this thing is assembled, it, this thing is built like a tank. Um, notice all the belts, all the hardware, everything is all pre-installed, so you don't have to mess with this at all. 
come this way as soon as you open the package, which is really quite nice and saves a lot of time and a lot of tuning. And just in case you're concerned, the heavy top steel hat isn't strong enough. You've got these corner braces to install as well. And then you go ahead and install the two bed mounts onto the carriages of the two Z linear guides or linear rails. And you can leave these just a little bit slightly loose um, unless you put a level or something on top uh, to make sure these are flat. So then you have to insert uh, the Z screws um, here through <laughs> the base of the bed onto or into the stepper motors. Now, I'm not showing it here, but I actually used a spacer block um, to make sure each side of the bed are exactly the same height from the base of the printer. And you should make sure uh, you do the same here. Otherwise, because there's a belt attached between these two motors, it's going to be tricky to level the bed if you don't. Um, but I had the spacer in place. I know this is the same height as the other side. And here I'm tightening the set screws. And be sure to tighten two of them. Um, because there's one on the front and one on one of the sides, depending on how you look at it. And, um, and then again, do this to the other side. And again, make sure these are level, or at least equal in level. Otherwise, you're going to have a very crooked bed. And then you need to install the stabilizers for the Z-screws. The one on the right here has the end stop switch attached um, as a way to tell the difference. Otherwise, the angled um, piece of metal here, steel, with the bearings, as far as I can tell, are pretty much exactly the same. And uh, here I am just tightening the bolts down once I've inserted it onto the screw. And do this to the other side as well. And then just run a little test by hand um, by turning the screw, moving the bed mount up to make sure that it properly touches the Z end stop switch. Here it's a little loose. Um, I can, I've made some adjustments and I've tightened those bolts. Um, but again, just trying to make sure the, uh, the location is correct to make sure that Z end stop switch is activated when it needs to. Once both sides are done, you can go ahead and install the bed. Here I've got the bed on the springs with the screws in four corners with the big um, hand knobs to tighten this down and get all four corners. And then I roughly tighten these down to about half the spring height to get some pretension on here. And then you can go ahead and install the bed insulator here if you like. I'm choosing not to for now. I'm going to do that later. And then go ahead and install the hot end unit. It simply bolts on to these three holes here. And uh, it's relatively simple. Make sure you tighten it down. And then go ahead and bolt the X end stop switch to the carriage as well. And then go ahead and insert the tie wrap so you can tighten down the umbilical cord here. The umbilical cable, I guess I should be saying. And uh, in addition, the printer came with these handy flush cutters, which is really nice, because you'll need them to trim the tie wrap here, which I do right here. And then we install the Bowden extruder onto the frame. And here I use an old filament spool to make sure the filament spool holder is at the right height. So I can assemble that on the side as well, right under the extruder. And then I space out the print head as far out as I can, uh, so I can tighten down the other end of the umbilical here. And then insert the Bowden tube into the hot end on the print head. Make sure you push it all the way in so it hits bottom. And then of course insert the other end into the extruder like so. So then we plug in the cable for the extruder 
And there's also the filament sensor here that I'm plugging in but not mounting yet because there isn't a place and I'll take care of that at the end. And here we connect the Y end stop. And then we connect the cables for the bed. Again, these are all pre-terminated and pre-wired. Connect the Y-axis stepper motor, the X-axis stepper motor, and then the Z end stop. And on top of that, I'm inserting it, uh, the cable into the railing. And they provide these really nice um, cable covers to hold them in. And you'll need to insert these all over the place as you run the wires down the extrusion. Like so. So here I'm using a square, but you can use any object as long as it's the same object all the way around. But I'm just trying to make sure that uh, the bed is reasonably level before I go ahead and level the bed and make whatever adjustments I need. Um, but I did this to all four corners. And again, that way, at least I'm starting off with the bed at a consistent height from, um, I guess, the bed holders that exist on the linear guides, again, to get a, a fairly consistent bed level. And then take the protective cover off the aluminum bed, like so. And then go ahead and take the protective cover off the glass print surface as well. Um, I don't have lots of experience printing on glass. At some point, I expect I'm going to change this for PEI, but it'll do for now. And then once you've done that, insert the bed clamps, and here I am tightening them, tightening them down in each corner, the two front ones and the two in the rear. So I checked all the end stops manually to make sure they engage as expected. And then I turn on the printer for the first time here. And then I actually homed each of these X, Y, and Z individually just to make sure they work. And then once I did that, I went ahead and just for kicks did a home all. And that seemed to work as well. And here's the printer homing at actual speed. This is not speeded up, although at some point you'd like to tune this to maybe go a little bit quicker. Um, but it does the X, it does the Y, and now it's doing the Z, and it'll do the Z several times. And if you look at the right, um, you can see the little blue LED when the micro switch activates as well, which is obviously a, a really good sign. And then I also went ahead and cleaned the bed with both Windex and then alcohol, although soap and water would probably be best. And then I went ahead and used the bed leveling option from the menus on the touch screen. And uh, I'm going to save you from this, but I went ahead, <laughs> used a piece of paper, and probably went around four times to get all four corners. And uh, I just kept doing it until it leveled out and that was it then I ran my first test print here I am um, printing a Voron test cube um, it's what I had around relatively uh, handy and this is actual speed first layer um, it's running quite slow but if you're used to 3d printing or setting these up uh, each layer at least for the first two or three will speed up um, the profile I used was a Prusa Slicer profile, and I've got a link above um, in the description um, that can that'll direct you to that profile. I loaded it into Super Slicer, and um, it worked really well. And uh, as you can see, I still have a couple of issues here on the um, bed leveling, or actually, it's the Z offset. It's actually too close, <laughs> and so it's causing some problems here, but I just went ahead and let it print anyway. On later prints, I went ahead and adjusted it. Um, but in the end, this actually came out pretty well, and 
I'm going to skip through a lot of time here and show you some um, parts as how this progressed. So on this test cube here you can see the bridging is pretty good for a very first print. And um, the detail on the cube is all good. Um, the X and the Y um, characters look good. Um, I'm actually quite surprised. This looks really, really good. Um, of course, it can use some more tuning, and over time I'll do that. Uh, but this is really pretty impressive for a very first print. So looking at the dimensions, uh, the cube is supposed to be 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. That's top and bottom and my ZF set was off and so we know that but 20.19 this is really quite good um, for both X and Y they are just about equal or as equal as I could hope for again the top and bottom was off or the height of the cube but again my ZF so Z offset was off so once I straighten that out I fully expect that to be fixed um, but dimensionally this is good again for a very first print so what are my thoughts on the Two Trees SP5? Well, let's start with the negatives. Well, the filament sensor mount is lacking. There just isn't one, and there's no reasonable way to mount it. But it is easily fixed. And if you take a look at the description, I've got a link to what you need. Uh, it has a glass bed. Some people like these. I don't. For me, it lacked a printer profile. It wasn't included on the SD card, but if you see the description, I've got a link to one as well. And it works really well. Uh, the printer's not enclosed, and it's going to be really difficult to enclose it. The side should be no problem, but due to the really nice extrusion, front back is gonna be a problem. And for the top, you're really going to need a hat because the frame wasn't really designed with an enclosure in mind. So the positives, and there were quite a few here. They've got really good documentation videos in terms of you know what you might need to build it. It's got a pretty large print area, 300 by 300 by 330 in height. It's core XY, it's pre-assembled. You don't have to install or tension belts or do anything of the kind. It's got MGN 12, 12 millimeter linear guides on X, Y, and Z. And it's got dual motors that are independently controlled because the controller has enough drivers to control them both independently, which gives you some flexibility in the future. Has a very solid frame and base between the steel and the 20 by 40 uh, aluminum. It's really well built. This thing's bulletproof. This has to be the strongest printer frame and base that I've ever encountered. It's a tank. And so it's a really good base to expand from. And I haven't done any tests yet, but I'm sure when it gets to resonance, it'll be great. And then it's great for the hobbyist. Um, basically, the person only plans on using PLA and PETG because you don't have an enclosure. And so if you're using heat sensitive filament, it's a problem. It's great for someone who wants to modify and improve the printer. This printer um, has a lot of potential, at least I believe it does. And it's someone who really wants a strong platform to make those improvements for the future uh, to end up with a really impressive printer. Uh, the end here, or the end result here is, I highly recommend this printer. Um, if you're a hobbyist and if you're okay with some of the issues that are there, I am. I'm looking forward to working on this printer for some time to come. I'm really enjoying it. I also promised some of you um, uh, a link to the um, uh, filament runout sensor. This is what it looks like installed. I did not design this, but I have the link to print printables to show you where it's at.